Okay, first thing I'm going to do is go over a little bit about uh, what we uh, saw with the first uh, exam. Um, to start off with, very good results with the, uh, with the exam. It's uh, uh, 33 people uh, generated scores of 90 and above. There was a perfect score, 398, 696s, and the rest is 94s, 92s, and 90s. Uh, uh, down the line. So that's 14% of the class in the A category. That's really, really good results of the first A&P exam. Uh, uh, posted online is the key. Uh, the internet scores are posted as well. The, uh, uh, the key is in the format of a printed exam with the correct answer plus answer explanation with it. So what I'd recommend that you do is uh, grab your paper exam, which is available in the lab this week. Uh, grab it anytime. We're just going to leave them there until everyone picks it up and then print off the exam key, which will stay up there until we have the next exam. Once we do exam two, then I'll replace the existing keys with the exam two keys. So it is quite important that you print off the keys in a timely way. Because I will guarantee you by the time the end of the semester rolls around, and some of you are thinking there's no way I'm going to take exam six, you will be taking exam six by choice and you'll be wanting those keys that you didn't print off. And then you'll have to beg people on forums to see whether or not they uh, 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 will email you a copy because I don't save the old keys. The uh, um, uh, thing to do is to compare your uh, 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 exam to the answer key and see uh, where it is things uh, uh, went well and where things didn't go so well. The other important piece of information that's posted online is the mean score, which is the average score, uh, and the median score, which is the middle score. The mean score average, uh, most people are familiar with that concept, the, mean, uh, the median score is the middle score. That's the center point where half the class is above and half the class is below. The mean score for the first exam was 70, and the, uh, uh, 69, and the median score was 70. Now, whenever there's a median score that is higher than the mean, that means that more people were above the average than were below it. So again, uh, and it's typically the case in A&P, but it's, uh, it's good results. So, uh, all of you are familiar that uh, uh, A&P is graded on a curve, and so I wanted to go over the concept of what a curve is, uh, as far as what we're concerned with at A&P. Everything depends on the number of points that, generate, that, that you generate on, uh, as a whole in A&P, but in particular on the exams. We never assign letter grades to anything except the midterm and the final grade, and that's because it doesn't matter where the points come from, whether they're exam points, eval, quizzes, Wherever the points are coming from, they are all worth the same. Right? So everything just adds into one big pot, and then we curve the one big pot at midterm times and at final times. So this is, uh, these are the actual results for the first uh, uh, exam, um, and I'm using this as an illustration of how the idea of a curve works. So you can see the C labeled up at the top. The top of the bell-shaped curve is going to be the middle of the C range. The C C range plus C minus trickles off to the left. The C plus C plus range trickles off to the right. And then, of course, you go into the B and the A category as well. All right? So that's a general idea here. And what you can see is if you extrapolate from the letter C on down, you can see that roughly 70% is what the C is for, for, this, uh, for this exam. So if you're at the 70% level or higher, then you're at a C or higher. And the, usually the, the middle of the C range extends down a few points from the top mark. So 69, 68, 67 is probably still going to be in the C range before we hit the C minus range. So here's how a, a curve works. If, let's say, for the next exam, the average is 60%, 60 percent, 60 points, then the entire curve shifts to that part. So if we now extrapolate down, we see a C score as uh, the shape of the curve is the same. So the C score is at 50%. All right, see how a curve works. The curve is a normalization tool so that no matter how easy or how difficult the exam is, it normalizes your performance based upon the bell-shaped distribution. And we have uh, about 250 students in A&P. Uh, and whenever you're dealing with a class this size, you're always going to get a bell-shaped distribution like this. So it's a, it's a nice way to, uh, to do things. Now, um, in this instance, you can see that 80%. If the average of the exam is 50, then 80% is going to be that perfect score, which is going to end up being an A. Right? And then the A range is going to be somewhere there about. So what you can see from this application of the quote-unquote curve is that no matter where you slide this thing, you're still going to get the same distribution. 
and the middle of the pack is still going to be the middle of the C's. So one thing uh, that I would strongly recommend that you do, do not look at absolute scores because they are not meaningful. The only thing that's going to end up being meaningful is that final total point pot that you have, which is going to be a total of about 725 points for the course of the semester. Okay? That's what matters. And then what matters on an individual basis for these exams, wherever that mean score is, that average score, because the mean and the median are going to be very close to one another. So wherever that average score is, you place yourself relative to that point and you have a general idea of where you're going to be. Because we can't predict precisely where the grade cutoffs are going to be because the class is graded on a curve. Everybody knows A&P is kind of a challenging uh, a class. Exams are difficult. Uh, and uh, typically what we see is more the uh, uh, average grades in the 60 to 65 to 67, 68 percent range for the, uh, for the mean on the exams. All right? Now, with that in mind, um, what we do is always grade to the benefit of the class as a whole. So in other words, if the curve is a benefit, then we apply the curve. If a straight scale is a benefit, then we switch to straight scale because it benefits everyone as a whole. In other words, what that means is in a true curve grade, graded class, what would, if this was uh, the, this is graded on a curve, mind you, if this is uh, the class that is graded purely on a curve, then what's your percentage going to be to get a C in this class? Around 90%. Yeah, that's awfully high. Now, what we don't do is apply curve uniformly throughout. If we have this type of a situation, then a curve is clearly an advantage, right? Because we're sitting at 50 percent, and yeah, that's going to be a C. If we are at this percentage, then a curve is clearly a disadvantage, right? Because on 80 percent, 90 percent is a C. So what we do is keep our curve roughly at about 70 percentish, and anything less than the rough 70, 72 percent, and less than that is going to be curve applied. Once we hit the magic number of the mean score being at 72 percent, then we switch to straight scale. So theoretically, if everybody performed at 90 percent, then everybody would get an A. Okay, so you see how that works. So that's how the grading system works in A and P. Once we've done this first exam, it becomes a little bit clearer. Uh, as to how things work, right? So this is the way it's going to work for now through all the rest of the 11 exams we do f throughout A and P 1 and A and P 2. It's going to be the same story for all of them. So again, the only thing that you need to be concerned about is your position relative to the mean score, the average score. Right? Higher than that is always a good thing. Lower than that, you got something to worry about. However, uh, also keep in mind uh, you've got the option of dropping a low score in favor of exam six and of course the uh, if you do better in lab than you do in lecture then that tends to balance things out just a little bit and of course the clicker points those things are going to help too. All right? um, clicker points for instance however many there uh, are there's going to be 40 total for the semester uh, about approximately 40 and with those clicker points uh, if you earn every one of them then uh, those 40 clicker points would be like adding 40 points to a lecture exam. So if you had a 60 on this first exam, that'd be like uh, uh, you know, effectively now have 100 on that exam. Okay, so that's the whole idea. It's all about the points game. You treat points like money. This is your currency. The more points you get, the more money you have, the more wealthy you are as far as the grade goes. And it's actually a fairly simple system. Just keep in mind um, that is all performance related to the mean. And, uh, and how we uh, uh, actually do things in A&P.